All right, I'm going to quickly try to go through this uh, material related to completing the square and the quadratic formula. Uh, and the basic idea here is if you can complete the square this way with numbers, well, you ought to be able to complete the square uh, with uh, variables, with the coefficients just being letters and not numbers, because you're really just doing the same thing. It's just a little more abstract. So in the first one here, we uh, Molly has got 2x squared plus 10x plus 9, and Kyle and Harper have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So uh, that's our, our first line. And um, basically, in, in this case, uh, Molly's 2 matches up to this a, uh, Molly's 10 matches up to this b, and Molly's 9 matches up to the c. So anything Molly does with these numbers, Kyle and Harper should do the same thing with these letters that represent numbers. Um, so basically, maybe our answer there is a equals 2, uh, b equals 10, and c equals 9. Uh, if those had had negatives in front of them, I would attach the negatives to those. Uh, and that's a little bit off the screen, so let me slide this over a little bit. There we go. Almost. All right. Um, I'm going to back this up just a tad. I think you can see it okay, but maybe not. All right, the next line. Uh, so Molly divides everything by 2. So in the same way, uh, Kyle and Harper will divide everything by A. Uh, and the reason they divide it by A, because they don't have a 2. They have an A. So A is the x squared coefficient. And I'm going to keep this more centered on this side, assuming you have the paper in front of you and you can actually see the other side here. So in the next line here, um, she, she simplifies, and Kyle and Harper also simplify. So they end up with b over a and c over a. Now these may or may not be for fractions in reality. If that was a 1, it would still just be b and a c. Um, if it was divisible by a, those would be whatever those numbers are. Uh, can, uh, what did they do to get this in step 4? Uh, so they just simplified. And notice that 0 over a is still 0. And then they're just spacing things out. Molly's making room to complete the square over here, so Kyle and Harper do the same thing. In step 6, uh, Molly completes the square uh, by um, adding in a 6.25. So the way Molly got that was took half of 5, which is uh, 2.5, and squared it, which is 6.25. And then... On the same side of the equation, she chose to minus 6.25. Now, this is one case where you could have added it to the other side, but in this case, we're going to minus it from that side. And so in the same way, Kyle and Harper, um, they take half of that, which will be b over 2a, when you take half of that, and then when you square b over 2a, you get b squared over 4a squared, and then to offset that, we have the minus version of that. So where that came from is b over 2a is half of b over a, and then it's that squared. So that's where that came from. Uh, the next step, Molly completes the square over here, writes it in square form, combines the 4.5 and the negative 6.25 to get negative 1.75. And so uh, Kyle and Harper are going to do the same thing. They're going to rewrite this in square form, and the x plus b over 2a is that that's the, uh, that's the square form of, um, off the, it's the square form of x squared plus b over a x plus b squared over 4 a squared. Sorry for the scrawl, got a broken hand and a big fat marker. All right, continuing on. Uh, then what does Molly do next? Molly uh, moves this to the other side of the equation. I don't know why Molly didn't do that to begin with. That would have been easier, probably, but she chose to do it that way, which is fine. It works. And so then over here, Ken and Kyle and Harper follow Molly's lead and do the same thing. So they just added uh, the non-square terms to the other side. So I'm just going to say, you know, they added the opposite. Now, notice when they do that, they actually had two terms there. They had a, 
a c over a and a minus b squared over 4a squared. So when they move it to the other side, it becomes a negative c over a and a b squared, positive b squared over 4a squared. And they decided to flip around where those terms were, but that's okay. And then they did a little additional step here. They uh, simplified this a little bit. And basically what they did here is they said, oh, we want to get everything over 4a squared. So they just multiplied this term right here times 4a over 4a. So they didn't change anything there. They just simplified it. So now I've got 4ac over 4a squared, and they can combine all that. b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. Uh, which they, did. they didn't have to do that, but they're working their way towards a traditional-looking uh, quadratic formula, so they knew they had to do that. Uh, next step, uh, Molly took square root of both sides, and so Kyle and Harper did the same thing, so they end up with this without the uh, square on it, take the square root of that, and it's that, and then over here it's just plus or minus the square root of whatever that gobbledygook is, and they took the square root. And they took both the positive and negative square root, not just the principal square root. All right, moving on. On the other side. Um, let me get this so you guys can see it. Okay, we start. Molly then actually finds the actual square root there. And um, over here, what did we do? Uh, we simplified it a little bit. Notice we went from, on the previous page, we had everything with 4a squared underneath the radical sign. We rewrote it with the 2a, and that's because the square root of 4a squared is 2a, so I moved the radical sign just up into the top part, so now I'm only taking the square root of what's up top, and 2a is left over underneath. So, and the reason we can do that is because 1 over the square root of 4a squared is 1 over 2a. Those are equivalent with whatever we had on top before, in this case, we had this. I'm saying it would be the same if we had one. Oops, you can't really see that. Okay. So that's what we did there. We just simplified that a little bit. Uh, then what did Molly do? Molly subtracted the 2.5 from both sides to get essentially our final answer. And so uh, Kyle and Harper did the same thing. They took the uh, B plus A, minus it from both sides. They get this. And then they're going to say, oh, I got everything over 2a now. How nice. Don't have to, uh, I've got a common denominator. So I'm just going to put everything over 2a. Negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac. And that is the quadratic formula. Um, and the reason they did this, oh, well, they just added the opposite again. Added opposite. Um... And there are two answers because you've got the plus or minus. I don't know what the exact thing you want here. Why are there two answers? There are two answers. One, because there's a plus or minus there. When I take the square root, there's both a positive and negative square root. So it's negative b plus that amount and negative b minus that amount. But there's also a positive and negative square root because this is, in most cases, going to be represent um, the two um, zeros on a uh, parabola and therefore there is both, there's the symmetricness of these. So you'll have both an answer um, kind of on this side of the uh, line of symmetry and the same distance on the other side of the line of symmetry. And I'm, I'm drawing things over here that you can't see. So there are two answers because if this represented a um, parabola, it would represent both those answers, both the one that's plus the vertex over and minus the vertex over. And then there's an example down here. Uh, if you were, uh, this is, I think, Molly's original. And um, just taking those numbers and plugging them into this formula. And as long as we plug everything in and then get it right, we should get the exact same answer that Molly got, which we do. We get both the negative and the positive um, number. Uh, but the negative 1.1775 one, one, 1 and the negative 3. 0.82225. So that all works out. And uh, when you're doing this, I definitely should show the plugging in step and this step, and then you could probably skip this step to get down to your answers. But 
uh, my expectation is you'll definitely show the plugging in and then the simplification of the, uh, what well, I'll say, the, the multiplications there too, so where you get it down to here. Um, and actually, I'm going to say one more. I'm going to say showing what your square root is. So I'd expect three steps bef um, before anything else is done. That's my expectation. Okay, that was 10 minutes worth. I'm going to go just a, a second longer uh, to do an example. Uh, if we use this right here, um, this is 2, this is 7, this is negative 4, that's my A, B, and C. And if I plug it into my formula, I've got the opposite of B, plus or minus the square root of B squared, minus 4AC, all over 2 times 2. Okay? That's what my x is going to be equal to. Uh, so that's negative 7 plus or minus square root of 49. That's going to be a positive. Uh, 16 times 2 is 32 all over 4. So this is a negative 7 plus or minus square root. 49 and 32 uh, is going to be 70. And oh, it's 81. I think, let me double check my math here, 81, oh, that's awesome, over 4. So when I get that finally, uh, that will simplify this. So that's going to be negative 7 plus 9 over 4, and negative 7 minus 9 over 4. So that's 2 fourths or 1 half, and that is negative 16 over 4 or um, negative 4. I think I did that all right. Did that pretty quickly in my head. I think those are the right answers. Um, that's symmetric around. Yeah, I think that's symmetric. I think that's right. There could be a mistake there, but I think I did that right. That's all.